devices that for the last couple of decades have been mostly a tool for entertainment have turned into an element of pyramid schemes and mining speculations in the last five years, in which the greed of retailers and manufacturers has grown in proportions to the decrease in the graphics card's payback time. And although the last crypto mining boom finished a year ago, its consequences will be felt for a long time. And no, we're not talking about the cars that have been mined on and now are sold to us as new or something like that. Both Nvidia and AMD have grown accustomed to the excess profits they've been getting from crypto mining, and they won't let it go that easily. How manufacturers reduce the life cycle of their GPUs, the top tier versions of which cost like a couple of gaming consoles. Why the RTX 3070 is doomed, why modern rendering technologies mean nothing and what you need to pay attention to when buying a video card today. This is MK. Let's expose these greedy chip makers. It's not a secret that graphics cards manufacturers have cheated us before. Just recall the GTX 970, which had in fact 3.5 gigabytes of fast memory, and the remaining 512 megabytes were several times slower. Nvidia had to extinguish the scandal that broke out by pouring money on it paying $30 to all those who bought those cards. But this wasn't too big of a deal. 3.5 gigabytes of video memory in 2014 when most people had a GTX 660 with just 2 gigs was actually pretty good, and even the flagship of the previous lineup, the GTX 780 Ti, had only 3 gigabytes of video memory. 2016. The popular GTX 1060 comes out, which occupies the top line of Steam statistics and runs modern titles in Full HD quite well to this day, actually. However, the above is only true if we're talking about the 6GB version. Those who then saved some $25 and got the 3GB version lost as much as 50% of performance later. This, while at the start the difference between these two cars was only 5-7%. And those who decided to save on the RX 470 or 480 with 4 gigabytes of memory are now definitely eating their hearts out. The 8 gigabyte versions are noticeably more stable in modern games, and the amount you had to overpay for the extra VRAM was just about $20 too. And then the first crypto mining boom happened. And although in comparison with the second one it was a child's play, AMD and Nvidia realized that people would buy literally anything that could mine, and that's where everything went downhill. Look for example at these two GTX 1650s. Both cost almost the same and have similar frequencies. In games, however, the second one is 10 to 15% faster. One has GDDR5 memory, and the second has a much faster GDDR6. And Nvidia doesn't really tell you about it, and the cards have exactly the same name. The crypto mining hysteria has affected low budget cards too. In pursuit of profit, even the GT1030 was deprived of GDDR5. AMD released the RX 5500 XT with 4 and 8 GB, and if before that only the lowest budget cards could have the reduced number of PCIe lanes, now even the mid-tier cards get 8 PCIe lanes. Yes, it has PCIe 4.0, that is, the throughput should be comparable to 16 PCIe 3.0 lanes, and there should be no problems, but the card was released in 2019, when platforms with support for the new version of PCIe bus were just beginning to appear. They were expensive, and people wouldn't really get a mid-tier card for such a PC. But 8 PCIe 3.0 lanes, as tests have shown, especially with the lack of video memory, became a bottleneck. The 8GB version, which cost only $30 more, is sometimes 15-20% to faster. But as it turned out, that was just the beginning. Outright cheating with the memory and bus could only be found in the low-budget segment. The fast RTX 2070, 2080 or RX 5700 and Vega didn't have anything like it. They had 8, 11 and even 16 gigabytes of memory with full-fledged data buses. However, this didn't last long. Here comes 2020, which brings us the second crypto mining boom. Many people missed the first crypto boom and then regretted it, so the second one affected literally everyone. I was buying a car and the seller was talking about mining. My wife was getting a driver's license and the instructor was a crypto miner. Many of my military colleagues have asked me questions about whether they should start doing it too. People would mine on anything that could compute and anything that could be mined. The RTX 3060 with an MSRP of about $370 were swept off the shelves for a thousand. And of course graphics cards manufacturers started a new game of thimbles. 
Nvidia, frankly speaking, turned its back on gamers, selling cards by the thousands directly to large crypto mining farms, adding a non-working protection from crypto mining to gaming GPUs. AMD stated that they would not limit the functionality of their GPUs in any way. Nvidia could release the RTX 3070 with 16 gigabytes of memory for gamers, albeit not immediately, but a year later, as a, let's say, super version, especially given the fact that they made the Quadro A4000 with the same GPU with that much memory. Releasing a pre-top-tier card in 2020 without increasing the memory for as many as three generations, in the times when gamers are adopting the 4K resolution and looking for the upcoming next-gen, but no one really cared about the FPS back then. The main question then was, how many hashes can it mine? In order to mine Ethereum, 8 gigabytes was quite enough. The result turned out to be predictable. In less than three years, the RTX 3070 turned into a potato which could barely run games in 2K. A comparison with the A4000 with the same chip perfectly demonstrates that a stripped-down video buffer can reduce FPS by 20-30% to and cause frame drops. Just look at the RX 6800 with 16 gigabytes, which at the beginning performed at the level of the RTX 3070. And now, even with ray tracing on, it can be almost twice as fast. With the RTX 3080, the situation was even sadder. Yes, with respect to the RTX 2080, it was given 2 extra gigabytes of memory, which is 10 gigabytes in total. But the GPU itself is only 10 to 15% slower than the RTX 3090 and after all, the latter got as much as 24 gigabytes of video memory. There were rumors that the RTX 3080 with 20 gigabytes would be released. Pre-release samples even fell into the hands of testers, but here Nvidia curtsied towards miners who do not need such a volume of hot memory. As a result, the RTX 3080 is no longer fit for 4K, whereas 10 gigabytes of VRAM in 2K is the bare minimum for the most recent titles. And even then, they often crash. But the card is not even three years old, and Nvidia used to call it the gaming flagship. But the pinnacle of impudence was the release of the RTX 3060 with 8 gigabytes. Wang's marketing team was gnawed by greed. After all, initially this card was given as much as 12 gigabytes of memory, like the flagship RTX 3080 Ti. It would seem that in this case, 8 gigabyte is an adequate level. But the problem is that memory reduction by a non-integer number of times is possible only when the memory bus is cut, which is critical in this case. As a result, having saved some $20, the user would get a GPU that run games 10-20% to worse. And what about AMD? The Reds did not skimp on large amounts of video memory, and in the Radeon 6000 series, the top-end cards have 16 GB, pre-top ones 12 GB, and mid-tiers 8, a great level for 2020 or 2021. But at the same time, the company continued to downgrade the PCIe bus. As a result, if the RX 5500 XT had 8 PCIe lanes, the RX 6500 XT had only 4. And the version with 8GB of memory is no longer officially available, that is, such a card is guaranteed to actively move data around over a slower bus. And if you remember that low-end solutions are often considered for builds with PCIe 3.0, the performance drop from this can be catastrophic, up to 30-40%. to Moreover, the reduction of the PCIe bus now affects medium-level cars too. The RX 6600 and its XT version have only 8 lanes, and this in some places can cause slight performance drops when connected by a PCIe 3.0, despite a good 8GB video buffer. As a result, by the mid-2022, a sad trend had formed in the video cards market. If earlier, manufacturers only slightly cheated in the mid-tier segment, releasing the GTX 960 or RX 400 with different amounts of memory, now it has affected everything else. Nvidia downgrades video memory even in the top-end cards, AMD cheats with the memory bus bandwidth, and it would seem that we have reached the bottom. However, Jensen Huang started knocking from down below. The era of the RTX 4000 has come. Let me remind you of the current disposition. The second crypto boom has been over for a year now. Successful miners have returned to real work and it's time for companies to turn their faces towards offended gamers. But that's not the case in fact. Both the greens and the reds have come to liking to selling cards at double the price to people who do not ask questions about the warranty and agree to buy anything that has a graphics card inscription on it. Therefore, the RTX 4090 for 1600 bucks comes out $100 more expensive than the 1390, $600 more expensive than the RTX 2080 Ti, and as much as $900 more than the GDX 1080 Ti. Graphic inflation, I guess. 
for the price of the 1490 in 2016 you could get a couple of 1080 ti's and a recent i7 for what's left the wet dreams about the former profits forced to raise the stakes nvidia in all seriousness wanted to sell the rtx 4080 with 12 and 16 gigabytes of memory differing in performance by as much as 25 percent since they are based on completely different gpus and only the mass indignation of users forced the company to change its mind and name the lower tier version as expected, the RTX 4070 Ti. I can imagine what a panic there was in the marketing department. Aside from the memory, it also had its bus downgraded to 192 bits, and many will say that it was AMD who started it, whose top-end RX 6900 came with a 256 bus, while the RTX 3080 Ti and 3090 had 384 bits each. But firstly, Team Red offered a lot more memory for this price, 16 gigabytes for $1,000, whereas the 3080 Ti has only 12 gigabytes and costs a couple of hundred dollars more. And secondly, AMD managed to mitigate the negative impact of a slower memory bus by using Infinity Cache, 128 megabytes of fast memory inside the GPU die. And as a result, on average, even in the most demanding 4K scenarios, the RX 6950 XT is able to compete with a similar RTX 3090. Let's go back to the RTX 4070 Ti. Of course, with the simplification of the GPU structure, memory controllers are also being cut. But the RTX 3070 Ti had a 256-bit bus, so even taking into account the slower memory, its bandwidth is 20% higher than that of the new product. At the same time, it doesn't have the infinity cache like in the Radiance. Yes, Nvidia has increased the volume of L2 cache, but only to 48 megabytes. The result of such cheating is obvious. The RTX 4070 Ti is a new pre-top tier card, the capabilities of which, taking into account DLSS 3, are enough for 4K without any problems. And now follow the numbers. In Full HD, such a card is 3-5% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. In 2K, it performs at about the same level. But in 4K, it already lags behind by as much as 10%. Even in games for which 12GB of memory is definitely enough. That's the effect the downgraded memory bus has. By the way, 12GB for such a card is already barely enough. Modern games in 4K can demand a bit more actually. So far, it doesn't have a negative impact on its performance, but there is no reserve for the future at all. So Nvidia was greedy here double time. It would make so much more sense to give the RTX 4080 20GB of memory with a 320-bit bus, and the RTX 4070 Ti 16GB with a 256-bit bus. But in pursuit of excess profits, Jensen Huan decided to once again crank out the planned obsolescence. And in two parameters at once, if the RTX 3070 or its Ti version simply doesn't have enough video memory, the 4070 Ti adds the downgraded bus on top of that. Apparently, the hate wave reached Nvidia's marketing team and the regular version of the RTX 4070 came out fairly balanced. Hardly anyone would ever consider it for 4K, and for 2K, the same memory subsystem as in the Ti version is quite sufficient especially considering that its GPU is slightly faster than that of the RTX 3080. True, the new card costs $600, that is $100 more expensive than its predecessor. But the fact is that the RTX 3080 is more expensive, doesn't have DLSS 3, and has less memory. So the RTX 4070 so far turns out to be the most adequate NVIDIA solution in this generation. The company, realizing its failure, said that due to allegedly low demand, it decided to suspend production of the 4070, although this is not the case. This card has been a hit in Europe for several weeks. Apparently they did it in order to sell the rest of the cards that no one would buy otherwise. Now let's go down to the mid-tier RTX 4060 and its TI version. Nvidia continues sophisticated mockery of gamers. Both new products in their basic versions come only with 8GB of memory and a 128-bit bus with 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes. Wait, did someone just say that the RTX 3060 had 12 gigs? Forget about it. And a memory bus at the level of the GTX 1050 from 2016. As a result, if we put aside the generation of frames in DLSS 3, then the real performance of the new cards in games is higher than that of their predecessors only by 5-15%. to Taking into account the slower bus and 8GB of memory, the RTX 4060 is only really suitable for Full HD, 
without any reserve for the future. Did you want to get a new card to go with your 6 or 8 core Skylake? Nah, that's not the case. For the new cards are only good if your system has PCIe 4.0. And when connected via 8 lanes of PCIe 3.0, the 4060 and STI version risked becoming even slower than their predecessors. All this was expected considering the latest trends. For many years, Nvidia has been increasing the performance of their cards by increasing the number of CUDA cores and if the GTX 1080 Ti has less than 4,000 of them, the 3080 Ti has more than 10,000. In the ADA lineup, the company violated this logic, and the RTX 3070 and 4070 have the same number of compute units. But there is still a good increase in performance, thanks to the increased frequencies which go beyond 2.5 GHz and improvements made inside the CUDA cores. In the case of the RTX 4060 Ti and 4060, we see a decrease in the number of compute units compared to their predecessors by 10 to 15 percent. Therefore, the gain from higher frequencies and architecture improvements barely covers the physical downgrade of the chip. Of course, we can say that thanks to this and the improved 4 nanometer process node, the recent mid-tier solutions now consume 50 watts less, and the RTX 4060 is even more energy efficient than the GDX 1060 in this regard. But we're talking about the desktop segment, and here the extra 50 watts do not make any difference. Whereas the performance gain smaller than expected definitely does. The RTX 4060 Ti with 16 GB, which is due to be released in July, can improve the situation a little. But overall, this card will not make much sense either. Judge for yourself. It will barely reach the RTX 3070 level. A slow bus will not allow you to unlock the full potential of video memory in high resolutions, and in Full HD the 16GB will never be utilized anyway. On top of that, if the 8GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti costs as much as its predecessor, apparently even Nvidia realized that setting a higher price for it was a no-go, then the 16GB version starts from $500. And this is already the level of the RTX 3070, which of course has only 8GB, but comes with a faster chip. And maybe someone will say that yes, the real performance gain is minimal, but there is DLSS3 which can increase performance up to 2 times, and yes, there is. But there is always a but. First, not all games support DLSS3. The company only mentions about 50 projects. Second, the technology works well only in high resolutions, where the optical flow engine has enough information to correctly build intermediate frames. Even Nvidia boasts of this technology only in 4K. Taking into account the fact that the RTX 4060 will actually be considered for Full HD, and even more often with DLSS, the real resolution of the render can be only about HD, which means there will be even more visual artifacts. And third, DLSS has always been a nice bonus that could further increase performance. But before that, the main increase in performance was always thanks to the hardware. And the fact that Nvidia is now openly relying on software looks like a bad sign and a reason to believe that things are gonna get even worse. There are no rumors about the RTX 4050 and 4050 Ti yet, but if we extrapolate the downgrades further, we can see both a 96-bit bus and only 6GB of VRAM. With the hardware performance, everything is likely to be the same. If even in the mid-tiers they used fewer CUDA cores than in the predecessor, what do you expect them to do with the baseline cards? So the baseline Ada Lovelace solutions apparently will also come as slightly better only at the expense of DLSS 3. And what about the new Radians? The top-end RX 6900 XTX and XT are not perfect in terms of performance, and they clearly do not reach the RTX 4080 level, let alone 4090. They do not have DLSS 3 and are not very good at ray tracing. Radian has only reached the level of the RTX 30 series, but AMD understands this and therefore puts pressure on the price. The company doesn't break the psychological mark of $1,000, and the RX 7900 XT with 20GB turns out to be significantly faster than the RTX 4070 Ti for a similar price, offering a better reserve for the future. At the same time, almost 6 months after the release of the top-end cards, there is very little information about cheaper solutions by Team Red. Perhaps after the failure with the Ryzen 7000 X3Ds, of which we have talked in one of our previous videos, the graphics department team are busy helping their colleagues in the CPU department to clean the mess. The only card that Team Red has released aside from the top end ones is the RX 7600. On the one hand, it also has only 8GB of memory and 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes, much like its predecessor. 
But on the other hand, the price is as much as $60 lower than the RX 6600, which is $270. But the performance is 20% higher. Will such a card be able to compete with the $300 RTX 4060? Rather yes than no. It is 15% faster than the RTX 3060, and as we already know, the 4060 will be marginally faster than its predecessor. However, DLSS 3 is the trump card for the greens, so the battle in the mid-tier segment promises to be hot. However, the planned hardware obsolescence of newly released graphics cards is half the problem. The second serious problem is a miscalculation with technology. The RTX 2000 cards were a real breakthrough. They added new kinds of compute units to consumer-grade GPUs for the first time in many years, necessary for tensor calculations and ray tracing. And because of this, it was possible to forgive both a slight increase in price and the fact that some of the new features were not mature enough. We all remember how the first DLSS blurred the picture and lost details, and RTX ON dropped the FPS two times on the top end 2080. DLSS 2 turned out to be much better, and at times, in the quality mode, it may look even better than the native resolution, and with a free FPS boost. Of course, this success forced AMD and Intel to release their analogs, albeit of lower quality due to the inability to utilize tensor cores, but more available to the masses. DLSS 3 has raised the bar even higher. Now video cards can draw entire new frames. Yes, so far there are slight flaws, but still, doubling the performance is a serious bit to win. In fact, not everything is so smooth. DLSS 3 only works on the new RTX 40 series cards. According to Nvidia, older cards do not have a powerful enough optical flow engine. But the most important thing is that there is not much progress in ray tracing. The RTX 2080 Ti, as well as 3090 and even 4090, all of them lose their performance equally and by a lot when RTX is on in high resolutions, although formally the new cards have more advanced RT cores. Of course, overall the performance of each new generation of DLSS is higher, but only by increasing raw performance. So the dream of cheap ray tracing, alas, remains but a dream. Especially when you consider that the current implementation of ray tracing is far from complete. Welcome to Night City with Path Tracing. Even with the RTX 1490, you can get about 20 FPS there. And on the one hand, the difference between ray tracing and path tracing is visible in the screenshots, but does it make sense to pay such a high price for a technology that is distinguishable only by direct comparison and is completely lost when you're actually playing the game? We all remember about Quake 2 or Portal with path tracing. This is the perfect demonstration that Jensen Huang can destroy any graphics card even in 15-year-old games. This applies to the ray tracing technology in general. After all, it was originally assumed that it would allow developers to create beautiful lighting, shadows and reflections with minimal efforts and small impact on performance. At least in the second or third generation of the RT cards. But well, in fact, there are only a few games with really cool ray tracing implementation, but the drop in performance from it is almost always critical, and requires the use of DLSS and often in rather blurry modes, especially on the mid-tier cards. This leads to another unpleasant question for Nvidia. Why was it necessary to release the RTX 3050 at all? In the Turing lineup, there was quite a correct division. The lower class cards in the face of the 1650 and 1660 were called GTXs and used the new architecture, and only the solutions starting from the RTX 2060 had hardware-accelerated ray tracing. On top of that, even the 2060 supported the RT technology just for the sake of being able to say that it does. This card often barely handled the ultra settings, and lowering them to medium-high for the sake of enabling ray tracing doesn't really look like a sensible idea in terms of both performance and the way the game looks, but the RTX 3050 is even slower. Therefore, it will make much more sense to leave the full-fledged ray tracing feature only to the higher class cards, starting at least with the RTX 3070, but to leave the lower class solutions as GTXs, with tensor cores for DLSS, which could help make the game smoother. This could reduce the cost of these mid-tier cards and would remove unnecessary questions to the RTX 3050. But Nvidia's marketing is merciless here. Everyone must have ray tracing, even in real 720p. 
At the same time, interestingly, AMD clearly supports the idea of NVIDIA with ray tracing on everything. Because even the baseline RX 6500 XT with 4GB also formally supports ray tracing. And this despite the fact that the RDNA 2 architecture handles ray tracing worse than Turing, and let alone Ampere. It just got ridiculous, even the Radeon 680M, which is an integrated graphics unit built on the same architecture, has a support for ray tracing too for some reason, and even the over-optimized Doom will have to be run in 540p in order to see it here. And don't get me wrong, this is an excellent result for integrated graphics, but by the standards of desktops, this GPU falls short even of the GTX 1650. Why did they even have to give it the RT units that literally no one will ever use with such a GPU? This question of course does not need an answer. The current situation on the graphics card market is a circus of insane greed. Companies used to profiting from the crypto mining booms are actively trying to find their ways into gamers' pockets. Downgrades and planned obsolescence of graphics cards, which were previously the norm for the baseline solutions, have now reached the pre-top tier segment, and the recommended prices are growing in proportion to the increase in performance. Ray tracing, which was supposed to be a help for developers and a graphics boost for gamers, resulted only in another tool for pressure on customers. Looking at all of this trash, I want to try to answer just one question. What should you buy then? Firstly, as I have already said, Nvidia has a worthy GPU in the Ampere lineup, the RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes, which can often be found at about 370 US dollars. It is an excellent card for this money, which handles modern games in Full HD at high graphic settings without problems. It allows you to try ray tracing, and thanks to DLSS and a large video buffer, it has an excellent reserve for the future. Need more? For about $700, you can get an AMD RX 6800 XT. After the drivers were properly optimized, this card turned out to be only slightly slower than the RTX 3080, and that if you take into account ray tracing. But at the same time, there's an excellent reserve for the future in the face of 16 gigabytes of video memory, which will be enough for it for a lifetime. If you want to try DLSS 3 and high quality ray tracing, you can pick up the RTX 4070, which is quickly losing its price and can be found for about $800, while offering performance at the level of the RTX 3080. 12 gigabytes of memory for 2K and especially Full HD are sufficient even on ultra graphic settings, and there's some margin for the future left in it. Of course, considering such a card for 4K with DLSS is definitely not worth it. In such a high resolution, the video buffer will be pushed to the limits. Gamers, unlike crypto miners, do not earn money on their cards. And therefore, not everyone agrees to pay some $1500 for an entertainment device. And that's exactly how much the Team Dream devices are now priced at. Therefore, it is not surprising that gamers who bought inexpensive RTX 30 series after the crypto mining boom are not particularly eager to switch to the 40 series, and the prices before the release of each new card fall by 50 to 100 dollars. This is encouraging. Nvidia has already found a replacement for crypto mining. We are talking about AI tasks. They are extremely demanding of resources and expensive. Microsoft spends 700 thousand dollars a day on the operation of ChatGPT. And here's where the new market full of money lies for Team Green. Jason Huang is already rubbing his hands and predicting that AI models will become a million times more powerful over the next decade, and AI factories around the world are expected to appear. Richer companies will of course use specialized NVIDIA H100 Tensor for $30,000 a piece, but less wealthy companies will manage their farms with ordinary consumer-grade cards, since they also have Tensor cores. How this will affect the cost of graphics cards for gamers, I think we will find out soon. This was MK, I'll see you again. Bye.